is one of the top keepers in the world, Hope Solo. The Japanese national team also knowing they have much to prove tonight as we are that much closer to the Women's World Cup. This the next to last match for the USA before next month's Women's World Cup. The roster is set, but in the 40 days before their first match, these players still have much to prove. Abby Wambach will play in her third World Cup, and after a 2011 of injury and frustration, the leading active American scorer is back as the centerpiece of the attack. Tonight's opponent, fourth-ranked Japan, also headed to the World Cup. These women hope to provide their nation still recovering from disaster moments of pride in the days ahead. The USA and Japan are next. We are five weeks from FIFA Women's World Cup 2011, the USA and Japan tonight in Cary, North Carolina. Good evening. I'm Bob Lee. With me, Brianna Scurry, Brandy Chastain, who between them have four Olympic gold medals, three World Cup championships, and a combined 360-plus appearances for the U.S. national team. They will be our colleagues this summer in Germany, bringing you all the action. Okay, Brandy, let's talk about the USA roster, which was set nine days ago, but then last week, the devastating knee injury to Lindsay Tarpley, upsetting what with this U.S. team? I'm not so sure on the field it's that upsetting only because Tarp was such a, uh, a spiritual and emotional person and it's really a part of the chemistry. So it's the psychology of the team. Just like in 91 we lost a player, Megan McCarthy, to an injury such as this, ACL, but we carried her with us into the game. She was like an angel for us, as that's what will happen with Lindsay. That was 75th minute last weekend in the 2 nothing victory over Japan. Okay, Brian, let's talk about Abby Wambach and, of course, Leading active American scorer, third active scorer all time. Turns 31 years of age in about 10 days, and the expectations have been when will she get back on her game? Uh, Abby Wambach has gone 400 plus minutes without a goal, and she scored a goal and got an assist the last game USA versus Japan. So it's very good for the U.S. team that Abby's back in the scoring column. Not only is she back in the scoring column, she's back in that scoring column. Textbook Abby powerful header and so the US should feel very good about that we will be visiting with her at halftime because she has uh, said she takes it rather personally she does not have what you two ladies have which is a World Cup championship so we're that much closer to seeing whether the US can get there Ian Dark Julie Fowley around the match this evening good evening Ian And you're right, uh, it's important that two of the biggest players in the team, ace goal scorer Abby Wambach and the goalkeeper Hope Solo, Julie, are back, they're fit, they're firing, apparently. Apparently, <laughs> and in fact, Hope Solo is our Gatorade Prime to perform player tonight. And it's great news for the United States because people weren't sure. She had major shoulder surgery in September. First competitive start back Saturday against Japan, and she's now going to gain confidence and timing with about a month out from the World Cup. But on the other side for Japan, we've all seen Homare Sawa play for Japan. She's going into her fourth World Cup, but you're seeing another young star in Mana Iwabuchi. 18 years old, she is a little spark plug. So much fun to watch. This is only her fourth cap for Japan tonight. Yes, this is an important game, an important test running out of time. When we come back, the anthems and the vital team news for tonight's game. Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina, the United States, 40 days away from the Women's World Cup and among the favorites to lift the trophy with another important test tonight, playing Japan, who they did beat by two goals to nil four days ago. Here are the national anthems for the two sides. We well, hope that anthem is playing in Frankfurt at the World Cup final this summer. Very excited. I've spoke to a fair few of the players after training yesterday, and, uh, well, the adrenaline, I think, is pumping at this stage. But they don't want any unexpected setbacks here. There is Abby Wambach, back to form after a heel injury. 118 goals, breaking a scoring drought at the weekend against Japan. And she is a woman on a mission. I take it very personally that I've never won a World Cup. I want to make this country proud of us again for winning a World Cup, and it hasn't happened since 99, and, and that's something that I take personally because I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of something great here. 
kickoff time approaching and these two matches against the USA are the first played by Japan since the dreadful devastation of biblical proportions in the northeast of the country. The Japanese midfielder Aya Miyama is from Chiba, one of the places where the tsunami and earthquake hit. Uh, you do feel for the Japanese players. I am Yama, who was on an aeroplane about to land at Tokyo Airport when the earthquake and tsunami hit. The U.S. are doing their bit as well for the charity appeal. Shirts from the game, which was played at Columbus, Ohio at the weekend, are being auctioned for charity. All the proceeds to the Red Cross and more details on ussoccer.com. And there will now be a moment of silence in respect of the victims. The Japan women's team hope that in some small way they can lift morale with a big performance at the Women's World Cup this summer. So, let's check the two sides for tonight. The vital team news now. And we're going to look at the U.S. lineup first. Playing in their familiar 4-4-2. And we're going to focus right now on that midfield because they're playing in a staggered way. Carly Lloyd playing higher. Carly Box in a more defensive role and really trying to figure out between the two of them how they can dictate pace for the United States and of course possession will be the engine the two engines for the US tonight and for Japan I talked to Hamari Sawa earlier last week she said they're playing in a new system a 4-1-4-1 and she with not without question is the one that will be running the show for them out of the center of midfield tonight so what is the American coach Pia Sundhaga looking for from tonight's game? Let's hear from Bob Holtzman who will be with the U.S. team at the World Cup this summer. Well, Ian, Pia Sundhaga has a couple of specific goals here tonight. She wants to see more and better crosses into the box with Heather O'Reilly initiating those from the right side. And second, after a slow start to the match Saturday night, she would like to see a high-pressure team for at least the first 10 minutes. But, Ian, don't expect the Americans to show too much tonight. There are assistant coaches here from Sweden and England scouting this game. That's a good bit of intelligence. England and Sweden, by the way, played each other last night. England continuing their good form with a 2-0 victory there. There's Shannon Box. Big job for her anchoring the midfield tonight, Julie. And she is, is one that they're looking at because she's been a little fatigued as of late. Her legs haven't been quite there, so I'm not sure if she's going to get a full 90, but there is a real focus on that central midfield area right now. Interesting story about Shannon that she was picked in the World Cup squad a few years back before she'd ever won a cap. That's never ever happened. She had been playing so well with the San Diego Spirit, I might add, our team, our former team with the WUSA, that she made the World Cup squad off of that. So the USA again wearing the uh, new all black outfit that debuted at the weekend and the 2-0 win over tonight's opponents in Columbus, Ohio. And here's an early touch for Megan Rapino, who scored recently in the defeat against England. I must say, I watched the training yesterday and they looked very, very sharp, particularly the strikers. Whether they continue to do that in a match situation, we are about to find out. I did think they looked very good against Japan, the two up top, and Abby Wambach and Amy Rodriguez. Much better rhythm between the two. Here's Heather O'Reilly. Well read there by Sawa, who'll be well known to fans of American women's soccer. She's played in America. She's very much the star of the Japanese side, the playmaker. Here's Abby Wambach at last playing pain-free. What a fine ball that is to pick up Amy Rodriguez. Both of the strikers scored at the weekend against Japan. I thought Rodriguez's goal was extremely well taken as well. All the publicity's been about Wombach. Yeah, it was a great goal. She was passed near post, let it come across her body, and she was more mobile. They just seemed to be working better as a tandem up top. 
We had a couple of changes tonight, Japan. One of the players they've left out is one of their most experienced as well, Kazuhi Ando. And they're giving a run out to uh, Kawasumi, as well as the young lady that you were talking about before the kickoff, Mana Iwabuchi, 18. They think she's a big, big hope, and I think she's already scored against the USA at under-20 level. And, and there has always been a problem for the Japanese with goal scorers and consistent goal scorers, and there's a real hope she's going to solve that problem for them. There she is on the ball right now. Right on cue. Sawa picks it up. That one's played in behind his Ono, and the bounce favoured Bueller there. Almost got in behind they do lack a little bit of cutting edge Japan for all their good technical work in the middle of the field that has always been one of their sharpest criticisms is they just don't have that bite they lack the size they lack a little bit of tenacity their average height is about 53 I think they listed as 54 I think that's a bit generous actually Ian. here's a corner kick we're on that basis. The USA should have the advantage. And Solo with the punch. Didn't get all of it, but enough. And Bueller completes the clearance up towards Rodriguez. And we'll beat you now, watched by Stephanie Cox, who at the moment has that left back position. Amy LaPelbet had ankle problems, and uh, but she did train fully yesterday so you'd have to take it that Cox got the the nod ahead of her here yeah it, it, La Pelvet isn't a familiar left back left-sided player she typically plays in the center so a real debate brewing but it does seem Cox has the edge and there's Kuma guy with the clearance for Japan who are in their highest ever world ranking of number four whatever else happens they'll be easy on the eye when they're playing this summer with their brand of football they play Ooh, that's solo and oh, there was uh, a nasty moment there for Bueller who slipped at a vital moment Kinga lost possession to Wombach when she's playing and on form I must say the USA look a different side now Carly Lloyd Trying to get a shot away. Rapino. That's nicely done. Cox getting forward down that side. That's one thing I think that's in her favor. She can join in the attack down that left hand side. Yes, Cox. she gives an offensive presence that is better than you get naturally from Amy LaPelbit. Amy gives you the defensive side. But you can already see in the first five minutes the U.S. trying to press a little bit more. As Bob Holtzman mentioned, this was a focus for the United States. They've struggled with slow starts. They struggled in World Cup qualifiers the entire time, they said. They struggled at the Algarve Cup, struggled against England in April. Sagaguchi playing it forward for Japan. And, and here are some of the keys, Ian, I think, to the game. Set pieces, of course, because of the size advantage and the fact that Japan typically does not have strong goalkeepers. And then what we talked about at the start of the show, organizing that midfield. O'Reilly. Really good, strong run. She's got some real pace on that right-hand side. Rapino with the header, which she couldn't direct on target. even with the new hairstyle and this is again what Pia mentioned early on wanting good crosses into the box and an aggressive attacking Rapino which is always good to see she's going after that ball and anything in the air against Japan is a duel you want they want to keep things on the ground but with the US height advantage and as I said the fact that Japanese goalkeepers typically aren't strong in the air that's a battle the US wants to fight a loose ball in midfield crosses not a good one it was a shot in the end really wasn't it they could have just done with holding the ball a little that was Miyama who we heard pre-kickoff 
And, and this actually is, is perfect timing because there you're seeing what I think is one of the keys for Japan, higher defensive pressure on the U.S. You're already seeing that in the first six minutes where the backs, if you scatter the U.S., you know their back line coughs up the ball when they are put under pressure. And the other thing is, is Japan likes to play a combination style. So they have to get numbers forward out of midfield when they're playing this 4-1, 4-1 system because they're isolating one forward up top. I didn't think they were effective as enough on Saturday with either of those keys. Kawasumi, and on the left-hand side, they've moved Miyama to the right for tonight's assignment. Nicely done by Sauerbrunn. And here's Heather O'Reilly again. Almost a staple guide on that right-hand side. It's vital she stays fit because of that terrible injury for the luckless Lindsay Tarpley. She would normally be the cover for that right-hand position. That's such sad news, too, for Lindsay Tarpley. I mean, just fighting back from an ACL tear, and she was playing so well. That's always such a heartbreaker for a team to, to lose a teammate, and such a great piece for chemistry that close to a World Cup. Well, it's the same injury she had before as well, isn't it? In yes. a matter of months, that, that is uh, terrible, terrible fortune. Really good feel for her. So close to the competition as well. It's heartbreaking. Offside. There she is, watching bravely from the sidelines. But you do wonder what kind of emotions goes through a player's head in that kind of situation. Of course, a lot of the other players will be thinking, please, let's not pick up a, an injury this late. Ball is played in, and in the end, uh, Ali Krieger got there, but the flag was up anyway. Good idea by Japan, though, and you can see their versatility going forward. That was their right back sending that ball across. That's Kinga. She's also familiar with the midfield position because she can play in there as well. But they love to send those outside backs forward. One thing that the coach has been talking a lot to the players about is making sure there are more completed passes, that there's not too much turnover of possession. In the early stages, there are one or two neat balls being played, but again, possession lost there too cheaply. And the better teams will make you pay for that when you get to the quarterfinals, semifinals of a World Cup, and you're playing the likes of Germany, Brazil, etc. And you can see Japan's strategy. They're very good about getting three, four players around the ball. Kumagai won the header. She is the tallest outfield player at five feet, seven inches. Lionel <laughs> Messi was four foot 11 when he first went to Barcelona as a boy, so there you go. <laughs> Krieger plays it forward, nodded on well by Box. Looking to pick up the pieces there. And you can see Japan playing a very high line, holding it up at the 18, about 20 yards out. Trying to create some space for their goalkeeper to come through. Hayari. Again, that ball played in behind for the speedy Ono. That's good covering, but once or twice, Japan just exposing the U.S. defense just looking a little square early on at times. And there you get a taste of the explosiveness of Ono. She's got some pace. She was coming out of a deeper seam in the Saturday game, but now it looks like she's playing that one up high for Japan. Ono, who did score for Japan against the USA at the uh, last Olympic Games. Is the Japan corner Kuma guy the tallest player? And there's Sawa with the volley, which was on its way until the block. It's a good start this by Japan. They look more dynamic and look as if they mean business a little more than Saturday, don't they? Here, they do, they want they, a result to go home with. That, that, I, that was our common actually together, and we said well, they, did, they didn't just seem to have a bite on Saturday. There's the coach Norio Sasaki, who was the assistant. First, he was a decent player in the uh, J League in Japan too. Took them to fourth place in the Olympics, which was a very respectable effort. Is Rodriguez 
up against Kuma Guy. Good covering by Kinga, who's an experienced right back who played at the last World Cup. You can see Japan likes to play a really compact style, and their back line presses really high so that there's no space for the United States. But already, even though Amy Rodriguez didn't get through on that, a good opportunity. Kawasumi, lovely ball. Oh no, he's offside. Beautifully picked pass, but oh no, it just drifted into an offside position. And that's going to be the challenge for the United States tonight because Japan likes to pull those center backs all over the place. So you see Sauerbrunn stepping forward, and Bueller thankfully stayed and kept her line to keep Ono off. But they will be doing that often tonight, going at those center backs. Rodriguez looking to get in behind, but it was cut out by the experience Ima Shimizu. By the way, what a playing surface this is. <laughs> I know. I was a night at like it tonight. I mean, it's 70 degrees. Look at that field. I want to get out there. Put on my boots again. That could be a scary sight, actually. Ian. They'd have to put a whole medical team on the sideline for that one. I think a lot of the fans here would love to see you playing oh, again. No, no, that would be tragic. <laughs> <laughs> this old lady out there. Well, a lot of your old teammates were at dinner, weren't they, last night? I know. It was a fun little reunion. Yeah. They're all hovering around North Carolina still. <laughs> Mia Hamm was there, wasn't she? The legendary. Great to see, great to see her. Carla Overbeck, Cindy yeah. Parlow. We even let Canadians join us once in a while, Angela Kelly. <laughs> My pleasure and privilege to meet them all. Goalless here, but fair to say Japan have made the sharper start, but they did at the weekend. It's another slowish start from the USA haven't really got going yet Rapino that's a nice ball though to Carly Lloyd who is fouled by Iwashimazu and this is exactly what Japan doesn't want to do because here's a set piece they're giving up in a very dangerous area and just a sloppy foul there and the US wanting to capitalize always on these set pieces So many targets for the United States. Abby Wambach, Shannon Box, Carly Lloyd. You can see them all on that backside. Rachel Bueller. Well, they've been working on the set pieces. Let's see if they can get this one right. Rapino with a bit of pace. Bueller's header. Very, very well saved by Coyote. They nearly made that one count. And they have been working on service from Rapino, who takes a lot of their free kicks and much better service there. Great opportunity for the United States. Driven ball, hard to head away, and you see Bueller beating her on that goal side. It's a really good header from Rachel Bueller. No! No! Pino, they've been working on those corners, and that one is beaten away by the goalkeeper again, Shannon Box. I think the training's been working. <laughs> Amazing how that works when you practice something. And there you can see a good look at the back post for Japan. They don't play a post player. And I think the United States, they see this entire gap. Look at that back there. You're going to see a few of them fighting into that gap if they can get service in that area. A couple of great deliveries from Rapino. Yeah! That's not quite as good. And Sawa getting it away. Wearing the number 10 usually worn and favored by playmakers There's a mistake with the header and a terrible clash of heads there kuma guy and this uh one back is down as well could have been nasty you're going to see, this is something I have a feeling is going to be happening for a full 90 minutes tonight. These two already, Kumagai and Abby Wambach. And Kumagai really is the only one who can match up physically against Abby Wambach on the Japanese roster. And she clearly intends to do it as well. I think that's something Japan realized. They have to have a bit more physicality if they're going to be a factor at the World Cup. They've only once got beyond the group stage. And you just look at their size and you think, can they compete at a world level against the Germanys, against the U.S., who are big and strong and physical? I think it limits them in terms of how far a run they can make at a World Cup. 
Now here's the free kick. Routine. Lloyd straight into the wall. And she can pack a punch with her shooting as well. One of the things we always used to talk about on the U.S. team was with any free kick, corner kick, you wanted to either get a goal, a shot on goal, or a corner. We're going to be measuring that tonight in terms of outcome. One of the criticisms against Japan have been that for all their neat play in the middle of the field, they just lack something in both penalty areas. Shannon Box again. One back wide. Box attacking down the right hand side this time. And that was pretty well read by Sagaguchi. Sawashima back to her goalkeeper. The left back for Japan. Plays for a club called Tepco Marise. And that club has had to close down because it is very near the Fukushima nuclear power plant. And uh, she's hoping to play for Boston Breakers. She's just waiting for her visa to clear, but has been training with the Breakers. But a sad story, her entire club had to be suspended for the year because TEPCO is the one who runs the nuclear power plant. Put sport in perspective, doesn't it? Sure does. Eula won the header well, and she did it in the opposition penalty area a little while back. Sawashima. Never was going to find its target. A lot of players back defending as a team, the USA. And he did that win at the weekend over Japan, having lost in England. They did after that game against England go to Scotland and play an unofficial match winning that by five goals to nil so on the plane home they felt a little better but you were saying to me last night it wouldn't have been so bad if they tasted defeat and, and left said, it I lingering think, a bit and, and that's what it's like in my playing days I would have wanted the team and all of us to feel that for a little bit longer fantastic ball that by Carly Lloyd <laughs> Stephanie Cox one back going for the header doesn't quite reach it. One back was complaining to the assistant for some reason or another on that side, but she pushed in there. Didn't look like it. Omari Sawa, lovely ball, beautifully picked. And she's got a few options on this side as well. His, oh no, almost set up by Miyama. And there's the youngster just over the bar. Mana Iwabuchi, she is a threat. And that's something you don't typically see from Japan. One of the things that people always talk about when they scout them is they overpass, especially around their own box when they can take a shot. And here's what U Iwabuchi brings to this team. Is she's going to face up, given a little window, she's going to face up and crack one. And that is a hard one if that's on frame to save because she's got defenders in front of her, Hope Solo. Hard to get a good clear vision on that one. And here she is again, Iwabuchi. That's a clever little ball off the outside of the boot. Ono really does have some pace. That'll be a corner kick. And it's great to see the mobility between those front five. The one high player and the four midfield. So much interchange, running through. One's checking, another one's slashing. So unbalancing to a back line. Well, this is a proper test for the USA tonight. Yeah, come on. Yes, come here. Yep, 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 yep. Oh no, again. Niyama, the player who's played in the USA in the past. The ESPN 2's coverage of the Barclays Premier League. Continues on Sunday morning. Manchester United, the champions, taking on Blackpool, who can escape with a win. That's 10.55 in the morning Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN3.com. Massive day in the Premier League. You're going to be back for that one, Ian. I am. A little I'm, jet lag, maybe? I'll be at Old Trafford. 
occupational hazard, as you well know. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> That's going to be a beauty. There's some finish at the bottom in England, that's for certain. I know, I know. I'm a, a little, a little nervous for Wigan. We have some allegiances there for Roberto Martinez. Who worked with us last summer, yeah. Here's Iwabuchi again. And then he picked up only for some clever little passing there. Just finding little gaps, picking holes. And Japan have played pretty well here. Kinga getting forward on the right-hand side. No formality for the USA, this one. 20 minutes in, and you can see Japan has a little more to it this time around. They're getting players forward. They've already gotten four corners. It's one of the things that was a focus. The U.S. wanted to start faster, and they're giving up a lot of corner kicks. Against the Japan, it's less impactful. Against a stronger team, that's going to hurt you. They elect not to play the high ball in. Now it comes and hope solo gathers it very well indeed I think the only positive about corner kicks is it gets hope some some chance for, to deal with some aerial balls which she hasn't done in a while due to her shoulder surgery 94th cap for the American goalkeeper tonight I've worked it out that if she carries on playing all the games up to and including the World Cup she'll reach a hundred in the quarterfinal should the USA be in the quarterfinal of course and and it is great news for the U.S. that she is back and feeling healthy. And now all she needs to get is her timing down because we've seen hope at the last Olympics. She can make some excellent saves in big moments, and that is everyone's desire in a goalkeeper. She was brilliant in the last Olympics. Picking up the space again, Iwabuchi is becoming more and more of a factor over the last 10 minutes or so, and the flag goes up there against Kawasumi. There's a good look right there in that scene between the midfield and the back line for the United States. When I was talking to Sawa last week, she said, that is really going to be our area of focus. Can we find players in that scene and then go at them in that scene? And there's a great look at it with Iwabuchi, who just hovers in there. Well, this was around the time the USA took the lead through Abby Wambach in Columbus, Ohio. They got two in eight minutes. Wambach winning the header. We've got players in front of her and behind her and the opposition teams will do that at the World Cup as well they know the threat she presents which is why probably what do you think Julie the USA can't continually just playing the aerial balls to no. their big powerful striker no and that has really been something P has tried to bring to the team you know the balance of of keeping it and holding it and finding a rhythm and then when needed going to the long physical play it has always been a strength of the United States, especially when you have a target like that who's so good in the air and an Abby Wambach. Well, the set pieces have been good so far. In the main, from Megan Rapino, who's about to take this one as well. And that's not the worst corner you've ever seen. Comes out to Shannon Box. Good determined run. Beautifully run by Box. And away by Kawasumi. Splendid work there from the experienced midfield player. That's a very good look by Shannon Box, just having the will to take on in the box instead of trying to get a quick service in. And here she faces up and sees, okay, I think I can take her. Good confidence, trying to find a seam, no one really getting on that near post. Probably could have found a better seam. But you like seeing that confidence in a player. When they're in the box, take on. Because the, the thing you can at least get is hopefully a penalty kick call out of it. Shannon Box did score in, in the quarterfinal against England four years ago at the World Cup. Now Wombach promising this. Rodriguez waiting in the middle. Here she is. Needs a bit of support. Carly Lloyd. Looking to get the shot away. Heather O'Reilly. And that's well claimed by Kayori. And he seems to be the number one for Japan. That has been a problem position for them. There's even been talk of them looking around at volleyball and basketball teams to find future taller goalkeepers. That's a bad challenge that time by Box. 
Yeah, they, they said they've, they've tried and they're gonna keep trying to look elsewhere to find some height and strength in that position. They're calling it the Super Girls Project, apparently, this hunt for new players and goalkeepers especially. Kawasumi on the chase, very quick. Only Krieger, his game's improved enormously from playing in the high standard Bundesliga in Germany. Nicely done from Heather O'Reilly. A neat piece of play. Carly Lloyd spreads it wide. Stephanie Cox joining in as she likes to do from left back. Box again. Playing on a broad canvas. That's a very, very good ball for Heather O'Reilly. Good trickery from the winger. Beautiful down and Rodriguez puts it in the back of the net and the USA are one up and that was a splendid goal starting with Box's pass and then O'Reilly's trickery and cutback brilliantly worked and here's where the positioning of Shannon Box helps look at her in the deeper scene Pia has said I want to see her ball side so when the ball gets kicked back. She's there to stop the counter. She's in a perfect position. Well played ball. And Heather O'Reilly having the confidence to take on in that box. And again, the service. That's one of the keys they've been working on. So she faces up and she takes her. She's got that in line that's keeping it tight. And she still has the confidence. Amy Rodriguez finding a little seam, not even moving because she knows she's in that seam and places it in the back of the net clinically. Great sequence by the United States. That will delight the coach. That was a picture book goal. Just a bit too long for Kawasumi. Japan have played with great enterprise as well here so far. It's a good game here at uh, Cary, North Carolina tonight. Great trickery, old-fashioned wing play. <laughs> You'd love to see that, don't you? And, and, and Kaihari gets a, a hand on it, but a Ro Amy Rodriguez hits it with enough pace that she's still able to get it in but a good overall sequence. And that's something they've been working on because it's been hard to say, okay, Shannon Box, we want you to hold here. We want you to stay. She had the reins before when Pia came on initially to go and to attack. And so they've kind of put what I used to call the ball and chain back on her, but you can see how effective it can be. And she's had a storming last 10, 15 minutes, Shannon Box, and the play's gonna have to be pulled back here. And it's great to see because there has been talk about Shannon looking a little fatigued. You know, can her legs hold up? I mean, these, mm. these players are doing double duty between league and training yeah. and flying. I mean, it's a lot to ask. It's a tough schedule at the moment, and they're, and they're in that hard physical bit of the training, I think, that they've been doing in Florida as well. And they've trained through this game. They didn't taper down before the game. Now they went hard yesterday. Oh, this time, one back was helping out the defences. Obviously, can do from set pieces. Here's Rapino. Now, one back was in space, but the quality of the ball to find her wasn't quite there. That's for Amy Rodriguez. That's two goals in four days. She scored against this opposition in Columbus at the weekend, too. Yeah, and I think she's looked sharp these last two games. Her movement's been better. I mean, you're playing a, a Japanese team that isn't as physical as they were when she was playing England in April. But still, just the movement between Abby and Amy has looked better. Looking for the long ball in behind. Cut out by Sauerbrunn, one of the least experienced, taking the place of uh, Christy Rampone, who's just got a little groin injury at the moment she hasn't played these two games but was doing a bit of running yesterday and i think the word really from inside the camp is she's going to be fine for the world cup no problem yeah it's i think fun. if this was a world cup game she'd be in it but yeah. because it's not it's like why risk it but i must say becky sauerbrunn has has really impressed me i mean her her ability to be composed on the ball 
offensively, I think, is a great asset for the United States. And I still think the outside back position is one Christy Rampone can fill into. You know, so maybe there's a little bit of an answer there. Sakaguchi's long ball. And again, the flag went up. That must have been pretty close at the time the ball was played. Good run from Kinga. And there's the Japanese players, of course, wearing the uh, black armbands. Away by Sawashima in his little Miyama. He's deadly with some free kicks. Ask England. She scored twice against England in a 2 2 draw at the last World Cup. With Fumi Ono oh looking to get in behind again. Oh no! And the flag goes up. She was coming back, I fancy, from an offside position. They've been caught offside a lot, haven't they, here, Japan? I know, and the U.S. has done well to keep their back line pretty much in line, which can be hard against a Japanese team that likes to pull you apart. And especially when you don't have your captain and Christy Rampone leading that back line. Here's uh, Ali Krieger again. Another player hoping to be on the plane for Germany is Heather Mitz, who's had terrible problems with injury. The latest one is a hamstring problem, and she will have to play in the WPS in the week before the last friendly against uh, Mexico on June the 5th, I think, to have any chance. That's what I'm hearing. Good run here from Iwabuchi again, very well watched by the tenacious Bueller. Rodriguez with a little layoff to Megan Rapino. O'Reilly starring on the right wing. And of course, the moment I said that, <laughs> nice the curse tackle, of the commentator. <laughs> By Somashima. Very nice tackle. But you can see what happens when the US is able to hold the ball a little bit more. Miyama to Ono. Oh Chance here if she's quick enough. Very, very well out and read by Hope Solo. Terrific move, though, by Japan, wasn't it? Yeah, but but this is where Hope Solo, and this is the timing you hope she's going to have without playing. Great off her line. That's always been one of her strengths, is reading the game and anticipating. And that was good, because she, she could have easily been in a 1v1 breakaway situation had she not been so fast off her line. I have to watch Shinobu Ono, who actually made her debut against the USA eight years ago. And this... It's an 86 cap tonight. Has done so well in the Japanese Women's League over there as well. Top scorer for them last last season. Good player. I think she had a chance to play in Boston two or three years back, but uh, she felt she wasn't ready to make uh, the move to the USA. Looks very handy, doesn't she? I mean, speaking of making the move, Sawa, who played in the United States for many years, is now back in Japan playing. And I asked why, and she said, the style just fit me better. I wanted more of the technical game that we get in Japan. Rapino again, the set-piece specialist tonight. Rodriguez, cracking it under control. Still might be something. Very clever ball, that, from O'Reilly to Shannon Box. Deflected the cross. And... Wombat couldn't quite apply a finishing touch. And this is the service, again, we keep talking about that they need to work on, is the Rapino service in. When you're playing a team like Japan that averages about 5-3 in height, you got to get that in the air. And I think Rapino's been terrific tonight with those deliveries. You've seen a corner she hit low, and then this one you hit low. And I just think, you know, you got an opportunity here to put it in the air and win that aerial duel. you got to take advantage of those. Especially in a World Cup, you're not going to get so many opportunities like that. It's the consistency they're looking for. It's one of those players who's never played at the World Cup so far. There are... 12 in the 21 woman squad. Yeah. Oh, with the little layoff, it was all a little tight.
Krieger to Box. And then Sauerbrunn across to Euler. Those two in central defence played each other uh, with each other in the under-19 side right. away back. So they'll understand each other's game pretty well. Box again. And O'Reilly is a real problem on that side for the Japanese defence. She's enjoying herself, I think, out there. ESPN2's coverage of Major League Soccer continues Saturday night with the Super Classico. Uh, Chivas USA, or Improving Fast, host their locker room rivals, Los Angeles Galaxy. Major League Soccer presented by Adidas on ESPN2 and ESPN3.com Saturday at 10 o'clock. Los Angeles with Landon Donovan in great goal scoring form, leading in the West. Rapino, the goalkeeper just about got something on it. Enough, anyway. Cox. Difficult one to judge, it almost came down with snow on it. <laughs> Carly Lloyd doesn't need any second invitation to shoot from the edge. USA leading by one goal to nil here. Amy Rodriguez striking. Do you think one of the reasons for Amy Rodriguez's improvement is she's got the likes of Alex Morgan and Lauren Cheney <laughs> right behind her, right. wanting her place in the side. Waiting in the wings. Well, that, that is, is such a fortunate situation for the United States because they have four really good options and all very different. Lauren Chaney can hold the ball, more of your target type player, helps you keep it. Alex Morgan, we've seen the speed she has. She comes in and she's just a, a spark for the U.S. That's good strong play, really, by Becky Saubrun. Rapino on the volley, little cushioned layoff. Good build up play here by the USA. And it's Abby one back again. Sawa. And that's where I think the U.S. could afford to have a little more patience. Abby Wambach, she holds the ball, she faces, she sees there's nothing forward, and then she tries for this really long, dramatic across the field ball where you could play a simple one and keep possession. So we're on the ball again, the number 10, who's going to equal a World Cup record with a fifth appearance in the summer, equaling USA's Christine Lilly and Benta Nordby, the uh, famed Norwegian goalkeeper. Yeah, that's amazing. When I talked to her, I said, you're going into your fifth World Cup. She goes, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I just want it to be so special. My first one was at 16. I think she was playing in the top tier in Japan when she was 12. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. What you call one word a prodigy? Yeah. Oh no, nice and strong. And the runners, including King of the right back again, who's obviously been given license to storm forward from that position. Really aggressive with the way she's coming. And that's what's so hard because if you can get the winger or an outside back to engage the U.S.'s outside back, then that one forward for Japan isn't really going against four. Let's have a play. And what is a beautifully pleasant summer's evening in Cary, North Carolina, a leafy part of the world. <laughs> Although they did have a tornado here, I'm told, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, very scary. It's been quite a, a spring, early summer for that. Iwabuchi, back to Miyama, lovely play. Oh no, still might have a chance here! Just forced a little wider. And Stephanie Cox did pretty well there with the challenge. 
This is what's so fun to watch, though, from the Japanese. I mean, look at this technical ability. They find players just running off each other so much. Great little third-person sequence with Ono, and her first touch just lets her go. Little too much. Maybe could have even pulled the trigger right away if her body positioning had been a little bit better, but great movement off the ball. Good contrast of styles between the two sides, the extra dynamism, really, of the USA, but some quite inventive attacking play from Japan at times. And it's such a good thing for young kids to see because they play in these triangles. They're always seeking out angles for each other. Well watched by Salbrun. That's very well played by her. Rapina seems to have something of a of a roving role, swapping with Heather O'Reilly. This time she's on the right, Rapino. A little bit of versatility. And and you know what I'm also noticing is both of them have a higher starting position, which I think is great because it then forces the outside backs from the United States to step into their midfield space. And that's all due to holding the ball. If you can string a few passes together, it gives you the time to, to really create a shape and get your outside midfielders forward. We saw against England in April, Ian, that they just weren't able to connect, and so they never got into any type of offensive shape. It's a uh, breakdown in the attack from Japan. That time Japan have never beaten the USA in 24 meetings. The USA have won 21, and three of them have been drawn. Coming up at halftime, Abby Wombach's mission, plus, of course, first half analysis. Plenty to talk about as well here. There always is with this game. The USA's first game is in Dresden against North Korea, who could be dangerous. That's on the 28th of June. Exactly why the U.S. is playing Japan. Very similar style, the Asian teams. I think North Korea brings a little more bite. Mm, I think they do, yeah. Better at hitting balls from, from outside the box, shooting. But a good warm-up run for, for the U.S. And, and if I'm Japan, I'm going in at half saying, okay, probably giving the United States too much time on the ball. Can we press a little bit higher? Can we put some pressure on that back line so that they're not able to set play? Half time is approaching. Last few seconds of the first half here. Darkness is falling, the floodlights beginning to have their effect. Sawashima playing it forward, not accurately enough, she's got another chance now. Iwabuchi looking to spin, but again Sauerbrunn, very, very solid, and that's a beautiful little back-spin chip from Box to Carly Lloyd, her midfield partner. One back in a bit of space here. This is where they perhaps just need the patience to build a little. That's easily read by Sawa. Only the second start for Iwabuchi, the teenager, number 20, who's just got a touch of the ball there. She was 16 when she scored her first two goals for her country against Chinese Re Taipei. It's going to be a minute of added time at the end of the first half. The one thing you think about when you see Japan, too, is they just lack that pace up front to really outrun someone. A few times it looks like they're in and then a US back is there. It looks like they're in and then they're not. One back try to find Rodriguez. It was Shimizu who's doing the covering. 68th appearance for her country tonight. It was Shimizu. Sumu. 
Misawa. <laughs> Trying to get involved in the middle as Iwabuchi built the attack. That is half time. And it's a goal from the young lady they call A Rod. That's Amy Rodriguez, her second goal in a matter of days against Japan, giving USA the lead here. But this is no formality. Japan have played some bright, enterprising attacking football. They've just not been able to quite complete it with a goal here. Fascinatingly poised at half time. Well, Amy Rodriguez is down there with Bob Holtzman. Well, thanks, Ian. Amy, two goals in two games now. Tell me about tonight's goal that was set up so nicely by Heather O'Reilly. Um, like you said, Heather O'Reilly made a great run down the line. She saw me right in front of the net and uh, placed it perfectly. So I was really happy. Coach wanted you guys to play with a higher pressure style coming mm -hmm. out of the gate tonight. How do you think you could play? Um, it's really important for us to put that pressure on the, on the other team. And I think tonight we came out strong, we came out fast, and, um, you know, that's what we're looking to do. Thanks, Amy. Ian? Yep, and Amy Rodriguez, very, very well taken nice. goal, wasn't it, Julie? It was nice. And, and even though they gave up quite a few corners in the beginning and didn't have a great start, I think this is, you can see the confidence building throughout the half. And a, a nice ball in by Heather O'Reilly to have the confidence to take on and well finished. It's good to see Amy Rodriguez getting some confidence in goals going into this World Cup. So that's it, 1-0 at halftime. Lots to talk about in the studio with Bob Lee. Thank you, Ian, with Brandy Chastain and Brian Scurry. Bob Lee here in the studio. one nothing USA on top of Japan. A goal coming in the 20th minute from A-Rod, Amy Rodriguez of the Philadelphia Independents, who won an NCAA championship in Southern California. And not just that the ball went in, but the way the U.S. built up, yes, the pressure, but the way they switched play and moved the ball around, I know that impressed you. I think this is probably the best goal I've seen them score in a long time because it comes from Shannon Box, who plays this long ball out wide to Heather O'Reilly. And she sets up the defender perfectly to get in line. As she does, Amy pulls back and right into the space, goal. That's gorgeous. That's textbook. Just not being predictable. I know Shannon Box, her distribution, you've been very impressed by her in the first half. I think Box has had a masterful game this first half. She's making a lot more runs out into the width when it's timely for her to do so, getting the ball back across the field. And then she gets, gets the ball from the middle out to the width when she needs to. And so she's playing an incredible game right now and is being a factor in every time the U.S has a strong attack. They use the wings, just don't send it in. So the USA has uh, switched play, scored in the 28th minute, and has the lead right now on Japan. Japan, the number four team in the world. The United States top ranked in the world, but certainly not the favorite as we head towards FIFA Women's World Cup 2011, which begins, of course, in just five weeks in Germany. Complete coverage on ESPN and ESPN2. As we step aside here at halftime, we'll be back in just a second. Abby Wambach. A lot of pressure on her, and it's a very personal crusade for her as she heads to Germany. I take it very personally that I've never won a World Cup. I want to make this country proud of us again for winning a World Cup, and it hasn't happened since 99, and, and that's something that I take personally because I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of something great here. And the USA are in action. Abby Wambach is the target player. When you're the target player, you're often targeted. It gets physical. But perhaps the best player in the world in the air. Abby Wambach with 118 career goals for the USA national team. She, uh, Amy Rodriguez has the goal in the first half, but Abby Wambach, of course, the central focus of the attack. So good in the air, but it was the scene three years ago in pain, lying on the ground that has shaped the last three years of her career. Here's Julie Foudy. A devastating blow to the Olympic gold medal chances for the U.S. women's soccer team. Top forward Abby Wambach breaking her left leg last night in an exhibition against Brazil. She will miss the Beijing Games. Abigail, I hate to start off like this, but I'm going to do it to you. I'm taking you back to the game before the Olympics. How difficult was that, looking back? Well, emotional for sure, difficult for sure to have gotten to such a close moment. But I truthfully believe that, I don't know, I, I, it was supposed to happen that way for some reason. There was a lot of time, a lot of months, a lot of practices, a lot of games that I played in post leg break that I thought maybe I wasn't just going to be able to make it back to my old self. Just over a year after Abby Wambach broke her left leg, she returned to the field, scoring in just her second game back. It was her 100th career international goal. 
But there would be other challenges. A loss to Mexico in World Cup qualifying last November meant the U.S. had to play Italy in a two-game playoff series. I didn't have one moment of fear of not qualifying. It was just going to be a different way. It was just going to be a way that we've never done before. I was so confident that we would be able to go to Italy and they would be able to come to Chicago, and I knew that we were going to still qualify. The U.S. did secure the last spot in the 2011 World Cup, but Abby faced another setback. This time, it was her right Achilles. She has been dealing with acute heel pain for almost a year now. It's been some of the hardest months of my life, period. Even after my leg break, I think I've found a way to manage the situation so that I'll be at 100% um, come Germany. It's about time that I start moving into the phase of just forgetting about any injuries I've had, playing more physical, playing like the dominant forward that I know that I can be. This Women's World Cup will be Abby's third, and on July 17th in Frankfurt, Germany, she's hoping the U.S. team is lifting that cup, something the 11-year veteran has yet to experience. I take it very personally that I've never won a World Cup. I want to make this country proud of us again for winning a World Cup, and it hasn't happened since 99, and, and that's something that I take personally because I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of something great here. It's that personal, 118 goals, third all-time on the U.S. list and fourth all-time in the world. When she scores, the United States has not lost a match. You'd have to go back to the last time that happened was 2004. Uh, it, it's very personal. Through the generational shifts, Bry, in, in U.S. soccer, young kid earlier in, in the decade. Now, turns 31 in 13 days. This is, this is her leadership position on the team. This is a team that she can lead. Uh, clearly, everyone knows it's going to be very important for Abby Wambach to play well in this World Cup for the USA to do well. And I think she realizes that, she understands that, but not only her, the rest of her teammates have to carry their water in order for the U.S. to do well and, and achieve the World Cup championship that I know they all so richly want. Ian Dark with Julie Foudy watching the United States leading Japan by one goal to nil at halftime. A goal from Amy Rodriguez, who's starting to look okay, rather crafty as a striker. Yeah, and here we're going to get a look at it, because she's going to the near post, sees that, okay, that's not on. Heather's not ready to serve it. I'm going to back up and find a seam. And coaches are always talking about finding a seam, and that is a great example of it. Has the mindset to say, okay, it's not on. I'm going to rewind here and find a little seam. Good goal by the United States. Megan Rapino has been delivering the set pieces to some effect. And, and this is what I talked about earlier in the game, always used to measure if there's a set piece, can you get a goal, a shot on goal, or a corner kick? And you're seeing three out of their four attempts, they were getting a shot on goal. So that's a good result again for the United States. One substitution to look at, fueled by Gatorade with Amy LaPaldet coming on for Stephanie Cox to play at left back which is where she's been getting some game time recently she's had a few problems with an ankle injury over the last few weeks a quiet but likable defender twice the wps player defender of the year but typically a center back and this is the real question mark for the united states is who's going to be their left back and so you're seeing pia sunagen giving her another look she's not as comfortable as stephanie cox going forward or playing on that left side but they think she brings more of a defensive presence to that back line. So when you're up against the likes of Marta and Brazil, Very that would be part good. of the thinking, wouldn't Very it? Very good 1v1 defender, for sure. Yeah. That is her strength. The question is, can you learn it and feel comfortable enough to carry that into a, a World Cup environment? Well, on the other side, Krieger has got a central defensive background as well. So there's always the danger that you're just pushing in a little too far and leaving room out to the sides. Sawa, quite as influential as maybe Japan would have liked in that first half. Sawashima couldn't quite get on the end of that one. I was going to say, that's about as quiet a first half of, as I've seen of Homari Sawa. Much more active in the game on Saturday. Cap number 166 for her tonight and counting. Might be her last World Cup, but uh, you never say never. 
when I asked her, you know, how concerned are you about possibly if you don't finish first in your group <laughs> facing Germany? And her answer was classic. She goes, oh, God. That's it. <laughs> So that will tell you something. It's a good incentive to win the group if they can. Japan. They start against New Zealand, then they play Mexico, and then England. That looks quite an open group. You'd think New Zealand would probably be the, the chopping blocks in that group. But between the other three, who can tell in which order they might finish? Yeah, England's playing so well right now. Rodriguez. Now one back. for the crossfield ball they've tried that a lot diagonal balls o'reilly playing it wide krieger joining in from the right back position and that's a very poor clearance straight to o'reilly a real mistake there by Washimazu. could have been very costly and you're seeing a very active heather o'reilly tonight which is i think nice because there have been so many games in the past where she gets the ball infrequently and she hasn't been able to grab a hold of the game I, I feel like she's been, done a much better job tonight making her mark on the game Rapino with another good looking corner Carly Lloyd couldn't get to it and Japan do scramble it away much much improved deliveries now the coach has been saying we should be scoring more from corners <laughs> there was an appeal there for Amy Rodriguez about whether that had crossed the line. I think it was some way from crossing the line. A little hopeful. <laughs> and, and Boxy, I, I don't think she, she saw the keeper off her line trying to sneak it in there. I think she was trying to cross it. I have to say it was closer than I thought. And Coyote's there again. The whole of the ball, of course, has to cross the whole of the line. One day we'll have video technology to sort these things out. The flashing red light. Mm. Don't hold your breath, though. How many more scandals will it take before FIFA decide to act on that one? I was trying really hard to bite my tongue there, Ian. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? Yeah, they're not real receptive to those kind of improvements. Fast start to the second half here from the USA. Eula was in there. Here's Ali Krieger again. He's come home from Germany now and uh, basically he's a free agent at the moment. I don't suppose he'll be a free agent for too long. Now then, what back? He's offside. Been busy, Megan Rapino tonight, and uh, I think the coach will be delighted with her corners and free kicks so far. Iwabuchi, oh no, ahead of her, another again, just looking for that little fall in between the two central defenders, not delivered quite accurately enough. No, it just seems to be a yard or two off, doesn't it? The intention is good, it's just failing them technically. Sakaguchi fighting in with the challenge. The defensive midfield player for Japan. <laughs> the pullback was very strong. Here's O'Reilly again. Amy Rodriguez running the channel. One back is waiting in the middle here. And one back! That would have been a spectacular goal had she been able to finish it off. Great move, though. Wambach, Wambach decided not to make a near post run and to stay on the backside. And you can see Amy Rodriguez lifts her head up, sees her, and ah, nice attempt to find her on that back post. Abby just trying to outstretch, just hit with a little bit too much pace for her to get enough on it but nice presence again by amy rodriguez to look up and say okay i only have one person in the box running with me how can i find her 
Kawasumi. And then Sawa feeds it wide. Japan still in the argument here. Ono running the channels. Been outstanding. Kawasumi again, and Hope Solo has to watch it. I think that one was tougher than it looks because the lights are just coming on. There is a bit of a glare, so another good test for Hope Solo. And what we said earlier in the show is her first start since shoulder surgery in September. First start since she played at the weekend. Played in both these two games, it was 10 months ago. But she had the very painful shoulder surgery. Long, long road back. Sorry, good correction. Don't worry, I make loads of mistakes myself. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Japan trying to line up. That's probably a little bit optimistic from outside, but you, you got to like them at least attempting it. And, and here's the, the knock that has always been on Japan. When they go down a goal, can they come back and dig out of them out of that hole in the second half? Here's Rapino. One back's in the middle. Got to get the delivery right. Does one back missed it? Couldn't quite turn it home. To be fair to the strike, it seemed just to be a slightly difficult delivery for her to turn home. But at the other end, Ono with the pace and very well covered by Sauerbrunn, who's been very very solid back there in the Christy Rampone position. Very reassuring for Pia Sunhaga, the coach, that she has somebody who can come in and play that role if there is a problem. I think the coach always has to think, what if? What if something goes wrong in that position? What if something goes wrong in another position? How am I going to cover it? Sagaguchi. They are a footballing side, Japan. Flag was up there. And here's the Rapino cross she gets in behind japan with her pace and she's got abby right there and oh, abby's gonna want that back because that's a good little ball maybe a, a fraction behind her mm. but abby clearly in on that defender and just can't get her timing right as she tries to get it coming across her body i think maybe if she had taken it with her left side her favorite left side i think she was just in front of the near post and was kind of trying to open out her foot to deflected it either way it didn't really work anyway it's Carly Lloyd trying to get on this one so the other number 10 is right there with her US stepping up the pressure and we used to always talk about as players when you play in Asian teams we'd say they can't hang with us mentally and physically pound them in the second half and you can see I'm sure at halftime that was discussed I think the fascinating thing about the World Cup this summer is, will that still be the case? Will the old stereotypes right. still apply? Or are the others closing the gap fast? Bueller couldn't get on the end of it. Nearly fell to Box on the far post. Box, again, great trickery. Look at this from Shannon Box. They couldn't finish it. How did that one stay out? Rapino. And now lapel bet. Shannon Box had an outstanding game. Tonight, joining in the attack probably more than you'd have thought. And so happy to see that with her because look at look at this confidence. She's I'm going to face up, freezes the defender, not bangs her, still gets around, and then tries to push it across the face of the goal. No one on that back post to capitalize on it. But that's a great sign for the United States with her feeling confident. She looks more like she has more spring in her legs tonight. I think she's given notice tonight to everybody that she's still going to be a big player for the USA at the World Cup. O'Reilly. Now he's Amy LaPelvet. Not the worst for him, one, but nearly got on the end of it. And then Box tried to turn it forward. Lots of attacking intent from the USA at the start of this second half. No question of sitting on the lead. Makes it a good game. The conditions here in stark contrast to the last match played by the USA at this particular venue when there was thunder and lightning and the kickoff was delayed for 53 minutes. 
<laughs> against Australia. It was a 3-2 thriller, uh, USA winning in the end that night. I remember it well. That's very typical weather for this area as well. Carly Lloyd. Well, that couldn't quite reach that one either. It's a frustrating night for her so far. Likes the service, though. But good pressure by the United States again. They're just going at Japan. They've got them all turned around. The question is, can they get a goal in and really change the game here? Because as we all have seen so many times, one little counter attack by Japan, and they're back in this game, and it's 1-1. Cleared by Kuma, driving not very far. It goes Rapino again. One back. Miss Q really with the cross on that occasion. Tomari Sawa. Lapelbet. It's interesting that left back position. It is a question mark position for the USA. So every time you step on the pitch there, you're, you're doing a final audition almost. Yeah, that gets to be a little nerve wracking when you're only 40 days out from the World Cup. ESPN 2's coverage of the Barclays Premier League continues Sunday morning, the climax of the Premier League. The champions, Manchester United, will get the silverware at home to Blackpool, who will stay up if they can win that game. 10.55 Sunday morning. Do not miss that. And all the news from elsewhere, too. West Ham are already relegated. Five other teams could fill the other two places to lose their position in the Premier League, and that is worth something like $65 million. Pocket change, Ian. And here's what Japan, they draw in two, three defenders, push it wide, but you're seeing no one from the midfield coming in and joining them. They've got one high player in the box against five black shirts. One of the keys of the game we talked about at the beginning was getting that midfield line forward and creating numbers. Ono, who looks the player most likely to for Japan. Miyabuchi won't be able to reach that one. The final ball just not quite right. That's something that Japan will have to work on. And you can see the little things in the body language. You know, I'm seeing Ono put her hands up in frustration. I'm seeing Iwaguchi when she's running back, her head's down. I mean, those are the keys you look at as a player and say, okay, we got him. Now let's finish it. They've played in five World Cups, all five of them, but they've only won three games in all that time, Japan. One back, Rapino. Cross shot, not that one at all. And she's really having one of her very best games for the USA tonight, Megan Rapino. She's active, she's connected to that front line. There's such a presence between the front line and the midfield tonight that has been lacking in the past. And good little sequence, Abby draws in a couple defenders. And you're seeing again their starting positions for the four, sorry, for the outside midfielders for the United States higher. So they're running at that back line. Two substitutions. The Wonder Kid, Alex Morgan, coming on for Amy Rodriguez and Laurie Lindsay to save the legs of Shannon Box in midfield. Box has been very good though tonight. Excellent game, excellent game. From keeping her positions defensively to stop counters, from possessing the ball, from spraying it, getting in the box, and you can see, she can see it. She'll be she 30, feels it. She'll be 34 on the day after the first World Cup game against North Korea, Shannon Box. In comes uh, Laurie Lindsay. He's had a long, long wait, really, to be uh, an established member of the U.S. women's team roster. Trying for perseverance, that. Oh, no. After Iwabuchi, USA wondering how they haven't added a second goal. They probably deserved it. Carly Lloyd. 
And that's found its way through to Morgan. He's her first involvement. And she's going to mark it with a goal for certain. Surely, what a block! What a block! She'll be wondering how she didn't score there. Goodness me. And now Heather O'Reilly. That was extraordinary. But a fantastic piece of defensive work. <laughs> and, and Alex Morgan, I mean, she can turn and burn, as they say. And there's a good example of it. She's got pace. You come in in the 60th minute, you're facing a, a semi-fatigued back line. And you're going to see here she's making a wide. She's breaking a runoff, trying to stay on, off, on sides. And it looks like I thought she was off, but it looks like she did stay on. Great little run to stay on. Good first touch, and I think she just gets a little bit casual. Sees the open goal. Probably could have finished it instead of taking another touch. Right here, she should have just put it away. That saw the open goal. Great recovery by Japan, though. But that's the dimension Alex Morgan brings to this team. First touch in, and she's going 1v1 on goal. This has gone out of play and have made a substitution as well. Japan bringing on Matayami. And off comes Kabasumi. Is Iwabuchi the 18-year-old? Not sure who's writing Alex Morgan's scripts. Her first involvement in the game was very nearly a goal. You know, you know what impressed me about that too is the sophistication to pull out wide to stay on. You know, a lot of younger players, she's only 21. For this team the youngest would have gone direct and stayed on that harder line and been off by a step or two I think it might have been there with shimizu with the block again the delivery not really what japan are looking for and i'll tell you one thing the usa will not be lacking is fitness very very strong and there's a different look at it going wide again she makes that run good little first touch and presence of mind to know but i think she needs to crack it there chance here morgan again denied great save by the goalkeeper still might break well that japanese goal is leading a charmed life but kaiore did her stuff there How's it still 1-0? Well, and that's really the problem because you keep the other team in the game. You know, as we've seen so often in this beautiful game of soccer, if you don't finish these chances, they come back to bite you. And here's another good look at a, a different chance. Alex taking a good first touch to get it around the defender. And Kaiori keeping her line, holding her near post makes a good save but i do think she probably could have kept it low and beaten her didn't get it as she would have liked to is my guess magnificent piece of goalkeeping and the goalkeepers union will tell you just get anything in the way and she did that particularly from that range No shortage of incident here, despite the fact there's only one goal so far for the USA. Will they pay the price for these missed opportunities? You sometimes do. Oh, and the goalkeeper took too long, one back, charged it down. Here's the other thing with those two opportunities by Alex Morgan. Both of those balls played in by Carly Lloyd, so she's in that higher seam. Even with Lori Lindsay, who plays a different role than Shannon Box, but good possession out of that midfield higher seam. Alex Morgan, the youngest member of the World Cup squad at 21, hit the headlines with the goal to beat Italy in the dramatic first leg of the playoff in Padova. La Pelbet. Wide for O'Reilly. Can she keep that in play? Yep. Krieger wants the ball, the right back who's come forward. O'Reilly tries to get the cross in. It will be another corner kick. The eighth for the USA so far. And there just seems to be more joy with the US team tonight, Ian. They're laughing, they're smiling. Amazing what a little 
possession and goal scoring opportunities can do to a mentality on the field. And there's Carly Lloyd this time attacking it. And again, <laughs> it goes wide of the post. The phrase that Pia Sundhaga used when I was speaking to her yesterday was finding the feeling ahead of the World Cup. Have they found the feeling? They have tonight. Can they sustain it? That's always the challenge for any team. I think this style suits the United States. I think North Korea's style suits the United States. We've got a coach, of course, who played in the World Cup and was a big star for Sweden and Hegerisa, who won the most valuable player of the tournament award, didn't she, when Norway won in 95, is uh, among the support staff. So there's plenty of players who know what it's like. And you'll be around to give a bit of advice, won't you, Julie? <laughs> Hold it. Very composed. Good bit of play, that. Make sure she didn't just hit it anywhere. Found Lloyd, who eats up the space. This looks promising. Heather O'Reilly. Players arriving in the penalty area, plenty of them too. O'Reilly goes alone and scores with a cross shot into the corner. 2-0 to the USA. Heather O'Reilly with an individual goal. The US was knocking, they were knocking. Another ball in by Carly Lloyd out of that scene. And I like this about Heather. She had Lori Lindsay at the top of the box wide open that she could have easily played that ball back to. Instead, she said, I want it. Give me this. And a nice finish. Keeps it low. Kayori's vision was deterred a little bit by two defenders in front of her, but a really good finish and sequence again by the United States. That goal had been coming. It's the 29th in the international career of Heather O'Reilly. For whom this is a big year. She gets married in the autumn as well. She was uh, tasting the cupcakes yesterday, apparently. <laughs> a very important part of it all. <laughs> I'm pretty much on home ground to University of North Carolina player. So it'll mean something a little bit special to be scoring around here as well. Can Japan do anything about this? Started well tonight, but just have seemed to run out of ideas. A couple of opportunities that came along weren't taken. Here's Miyami. And the Palbet was a little clumsy with her challenge. Free kick here. And Miyama does like a free kick somewhere around the edge of the box. Change of goalkeeper here coming up for Japan. Kaiori is coming off to be replaced by Mihu Fukumoto. Who made her debut nine years ago when she was 18. Played three games at the last World Cup. So this might be as good an opportunity as anything else for Japan, the way things are going. Aya Miyama. Lauren Cheney's waiting to come on for the USA. Abby, just stay here. And that's going to happen now. And Heather O'Reilly, just about her last touch of the ball, was to score. She's got a lot of fa family, friends, fans around here for her University of North Carolina days. And a very good performance by, by Heather O'Reilly tonight. Deserved goal. So this will be interesting who they push into the midfield. It's Aya Miyaba, the free kick specialist. And well, that wasn't quite as special. He's knocked it on lapel bet, very, very aware. That's a very clever header out of harm's way. 
just think, inviting Hope Seller to go and pick it up. And I think Amy LaPelma has done a much better job at left back. She looks more comfortable. Again, there, she's not sustaining the pressure she had like the game against England. Here's Miyama again. Player who lost four friends in the earthquake and tsunami. Rakano plays it forward. Here's Alex Morgan. And Gabby Wombach is offside. Much to her surprise. But then strikers always look surprised when the offside flag goes up, even if they're five yards off. So it looks like they did a swap with Lauren Chaney at that right midfield position. I thought maybe we were going to see a change in formation, Ian. As they did on Saturday, Pia said they went to a 4-3-3 temporarily, but it didn't go off so well. That's correct. It's interesting using Chaney on that side. I wonder if that's just a little experiment with Lindsay Tartley ruled out of the World Cup with her bad injury. Rapino. The player who's been training is uh, Sinead Farley and creating quite a good impression, we're told with the coach, but no decision taken as yet about who Tarpley's replacement will be. Some others who are more familiar. In the 74th minute of the Kelly O'Hara could be uh, Kelly contention well. Dealing with a little bit of an Achilles issue right now, a strain. So she's been training with Boston. And Yale Averbush as well, of course, right. the central midfield player who was uh, left out. Utsugi's come on for Sakaguchi. And Ono has come off the field as well. And Ando will replace Ono. Constantly changing cast list at the moment. Cheney's first effort was a... Uh, He'll go on goal, and that one just, just dips over the bar from Laurie Lindsay, who's looking for her first international goal. I just see her saying, I wanted that one. Well struck. Thirty one years of age now, Laurie Lindsay. And Laurie's the type of player that has always been right there in the mix and just has never made a World Cup team. So great to see her finally getting to go at 31 to her first World Cup. And so on the ball now. Here's Lapel Bet. And he plays for Boston Breakers. Just run into trouble, picked up by Mariyama. Good run from her, Ando's just ahead of her. Miyama on this side here for Japan. And forced backwards. USA now with a lot of men, uh, women behind the ball, I should say. Here's uh, Kinga. Might be a hint of a chance here. Mariyama has been brought on to try to pep up the attack. ESPN 2's coverage of Major League Soccer continues Saturday night as Chivas USA are improving fast, host Los Angeles Galaxy. Super Classico, that one. Major League Soccer presented by Adidas on ESPN 2 and ESPN3.com Saturday, 10 o'clock Eastern. Carly Lloyd might be another chance here for the USA. One back. Good effort and turned aside by the substitute goalkeeper, Fukumoto. U.S. just stretching them every few minutes now. You're seeing Carly Lloyd so much space in the midfield because Japan, which is typically a very compact team, is all spread out. A good ball in, and Abby known to strike from distance. Get it, hits it well, but nice save by Fukumoto. Yeah. 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 
that one not quite such a good delivery cut out by the first defender USA have certainly stepped up a notch since the performance in England in East London but the World Cup is getting nearer and nearer 40 days away what's the mindset of the players at this time one stay healthy <laughs> but if you think about that too much then you know what happened so I mean especially a good reminder with Lindsay Tarpley going down on Saturday and being out but you, you think about you know how can we build confidence how can we build cohesiveness how can we ensure that when we get there we've gone over all the little things now you're just fine-tuning different scenarios up a goal down a goal up a player down a player Nasu has come on for Japan wearing the number 16 masses and masses of changes by Japan that can't really help the cast list has changed enormously for them in the, about the last 10 minutes he's run through all his subs it seems or close to it and you know who knows how set they are with the roster US very set announcing their roster 50 days early Rapino with another delivery. The USA keep to go for the jugular here. They want more. Could have had more as well. Rapino, good deep cross. One back. It's just not her night tonight. And that is exactly what the United States plays for against Japan. These type of set pieces. And you see Fukumoto wants to come but doesn't. I think she should have. She stays on her line. And Abby, goodness, you know, she doesn't get many open looks like that very often and, and just didn't get it. Actually knocked it down so much when you, when you bounce it over. That's hard to do. She'll be our own worst critic, won't oh, she, about those? Question. Point I'd make is she's the one on the end of all these chances. Another day they go in. Rapino, lovely delivery again. Punched away by the goalkeeper. Only as far as Lindsay. It's an exciting attacking display, this from the USA in the second half. And you want to know how important Abby Wambach is going to be. Her record at the World Cup so far is 12 matches and nine goals. Only Marta. The famed Brazilian scored more than her four years ago. Lloyd, and the ball to nobody in particular on that occasion. Could have been more than two, though, in reality. They've really taken this game by the scruff of the neck in the second half the USA I love the initiative that Rapino is making though and she's trying to find that back post bent driven ball it's not floated it's really bit hard good pace and Fukumoto did well there to come off her line but you can see the confidence just rising this entire second half for the United States is Maruyama determined run good effort and tipped over the bar by Hope Solo. Splendid play there by Karina Marayama, the substitute, one of many of them. And you know, when you as a goalkeeper haven't been getting a lot of looks, these are ones that can catch you off guard. So applause to Hope Solo for having the presence to say, oh, I'm still in this game here. She hasn't touched the ball in quite a long time. Yeah, great concentration from the keeper. Been a bit unlucky not to get one, Japan, tonight. And Solo at the second attempt. <laughs> just once or twice, I think you, you made a good point earlier on. I don't know whether she's just caught out by the lights at that end. Yeah, like it's almost like the ball's moving a little bit, huh? The well, reaction to it. They always tell you that, goalkeepers, <laughs> that the ball's terrible. It's always swerving in the air. <laughs> you should see it move. by Japan to make the goalkeeper substitution halfway through the second half. Usually when you make a change of goalkeeper, it's, it's a half-time, right. isn't it? 
Maybe she had a little something, a little injury-wise. But yeah, you don't typically ever see that. Having said that, Fukumoto started off by making a very, very good save to deny one back. And Sawa was quite quiet, really, sitting very, very deep in that midfield. They'll need her to be more influential on the big stage in Germany. Nicely curved and very well defended by Ali Krieger, who's strong and athletic in that right back position. In Japan, when they're trying to float in those 30, 40 yard balls, even though it is a good ball, they just don't have the pace to beat the U.S. back line. They're going to be more successful in the tight combinations, getting around them. Yoshimizu. Kutsugi. Right for Nasu. Miyama, one of the few who have stayed on the pitch for Japan throughout. And here she is now, Miyama. And that's a tired effort, really, which is nearer the corner flag than the goal in the end. Fine little player, though, Miyama, who was in the 2009 WPS All-Star side. She played for St. Louis Atletica and LA Sol. Off comes Rapino, who really gave a nine and a half out of ten display tonight, didn't she? She sure did. Good performance by both outside midfielders. The entire midfield tonight, I think, for the United States has played very well. Kevin Heath, another ex-University of North Carolina player, comes onto the pitch to a big reception. At the moment, she would be behind Rapino for that wide left position, but she can be a tricky and artistic player. So technical, very good on the ball. Typical winger, loves to take on, has the skill set to do that. She struggled with some injuries and illness over the last couple of years, and so good to see her healthy again and playing. She had that mystery illness, didn't she, that kept her up for a long, long time. I don't, I don't think she played for the USA for uh, several months. And, and then broke her ankle on top of it, had reconstructive surgery, so she's had a tough few years. Uh, sitting on the bench as well is, Shin is Sinead Farley, who, if Pia's really considering her for Lindsay Tarpley's spot, you would think might get a few minutes because mm. she doesn't have any caps with the with the full senior team. My intelligence is she's not going to see any action in this particular game. Whether she does later on, we shall see. Japan trying to create something again, but again, it all ends in a cul-de-sac, and that's been the story rather too often from their point of view. Something for them to work on. And those are some of the things lingering as a coach that, you know, you, that, that eat up hours of sleep at night because you have some question marks with injuries. It's taken quickly. Utsugi trying to get the cross in. You have the Heather Mitz issue, which we talked about. Now mm. you have the Tarpley spot you have to fill. You know, Christy Rampone still out with the, with the groin. And Amy LaPelba just coming back from the ankle and the knee. Miyama, Andu on the near post, trying to turn that home. She's an experienced player, Andu, who was in the starting lineup for the game in Columbus four days ago. And there are the, uh, that's the casualty ward, if you like, for the USA. But here's a chance for Japan, and a fine piece of work by Saubrun there to prevent that attack. And then Sawa trying her luck. Player down injured and Japan sportingly not the board out of play so that uh, Krieger can get some treatment. You never want to be getting injuries at this late stage. Just hope that's just an impact injury, no uh, tissue or <laughs> muscle injury. That's the ones you worry about, or ligaments particularly. Looks like she's going to be all right, which is good news. She knocks knees pretty hard there. Ouch, those hurt.
looks like she's staying on, which is great news. That's an area of the field that they don't have a lot of depth in right now with the mitts injury, as we just discussed. First big tournament coming up for Ali Krieger. And she'll come in handy with the translation as well. She speaks fluent German from her time playing in the Bundesliga. And that's such a great story because she graduates from Penn State, has a good college career, and decides to go over to play in Germany and has a really successful four-year career with one of the top clubs in the, the women's side of the German Bundesliga with Frankfurt. And he's really done the trick for her. She even had the opportunity to play in the professional league here and said, no, I'm pretty happy, actually. I'm going to stay in Germany. She made her debut, actually, for the U.S. back in 2008 and rather fell out of the picture. Certainly back now. And these are the areas of the game we used to always talk about as a player with the U.S. team. We talk about, they were called the big five moments. Five minutes before the end of half, five minutes before the end of the game. Can you capitalize on both sides, not giving up anything defensively and then finishing off the game with a goal? Again, the corner's good on one back. Not able to get on the, on the end of it. Carly Lloyd, Morgan, comes out to Tobin Heath, Lindsay, determined run towards the near post, and Japan really stretched, they're looking for a penalty kick there, it's not going to be given, Morgan was the player who went down. And here come Japan. A real ebb and flow to the game at the moment. Japan having to gamble and doing exactly that. And Maruyama has sure been a bright spot for them tonight. And here's the Lori Lindsay look. Again, you're seeing a confidence that I haven't seen in a while for the United States. Lori Lindsay faced up on the sidelines, maybe because they're getting a little more space from Japan. Puma guys challenge. Penalty for you or not that? No. No, it didn't look like it to me either, really. That's up by Kuma Guy. Mariana has been quite lively she since has. she was introduced. This is a 61st cap, 13 goals for a country so far. Place of the delightfully named Jeff United. <laughs> <laughs> Foul on Sawa will bring a free kick to Japan. Do you think they can make the quarterfinals with what they've got with that group with England and Mexico? I think they'll have too much for New Zealand, you'd think. Japan? Uh, yeah. If they can get out of their group? Mm. I think I think they can. I think their struggle, I think they're good enough to get out of their group. I think their struggle obviously will, will be as they get further down the tournament, and you're just matched up against teams that are physically much stronger. Yama. He's bouncing around dangerously in there. Even Kuma guy, the defender, the desperate to score a goal. It's going to be two minutes of stoppage time at the end here. But I, I, you know, I like to call this the group of life. <laughs> you know, if you're England, I think that's a great group from the... I actually, in Mexico, as we saw in the World Cup qualifiers, is much better, but I would take Japan and England out of that group. Yeah, that would certainly be the favorites. Remember, though, that Mexico did score that huge shock win right. over the USA uh, in the qualifying tournament. <laughs> Up towards Morgan. A little flick on, hoping that Wombach might be able to take advantage. There's no question at all that Abby Wombach is now back fully fit. Hasn't really happened for her in terms of goal scoring tonight. She might have even had a hat trick on another night, but I know. just the way it works sometimes. And, and knowing her, she's not going to be happy about that, but at least she's getting herself into the positions. I mean, she, she, when I saw her in West Palm Beach a few weeks ago, she says, this is the first time I have felt healthy in months. You know, it's just been so hard with this Achilles. People think it was the broken leg. She goes, no, it was my Achilles. Tobin Heath's ball towards Morgan. 
made by the goalkeeper. Time to look at the All-State good hand save of the game, which came from Hope Solo. And here's a save earlier on that you just hit well, and again, she hadn't touched the ball in a while, and those are ones that you, know, you can lose focus. She stays on her line well, has the presence of mind to know i got to parry this over the bar. Good game overall by Hope Solo. She has largely been a spectator in the second half, apart from that. She's been no end product, really. The Japan. It's Ando. Cut back, but there's nobody there. Loose ball. It's all over. Identical scoreline to the one in Columbus, Ohio on Saturday. The USA beating Japan 2 0 and extending their unbeaten record on home soil to 51 matches going back six and a half years. And it looked it was a tightish first half, wasn't it? The second half, the USA might have had any number of goals. And that's really the strength for the US is they come out so strong in the second half against teams, but really Japan lucky to walk away with just a 2-0 scoreline. US could have had five, six goals in there. And I think Pia Sunhagen will be very pleased with the way her team played over the course of these last two games. And now you focus on, okay, 40 days until the team plays in Germany in their opening match in Dresden against North Korea, a team very similar to this. Can they consistently bring it, as they did tonight, against teams that maybe give you a little more pressure, maybe have a, a bit of a different physical dimension? So let's go back to the studio with Bob Lee, Brianna Scurry, and Brandy Chastain. Back, Ian, we'll be back to you and Julia. 2 nothing scoreline, the USA with the victory over Japan. Uh, Rodriguez and O'Reilly, the goal scorers. But let's talk about these 90 minutes, which we saw tonight. You think back a couple of months, the loss in London. And, yes, the 2 nothing victory last weekend. But these, these probably were 90 quality minutes, creative minutes. I think the entire team played very well. They, Pia was able to get several players into the game and to get their feet wet. But my player of the game by far was Shannon Box. I thought she had a fantastic game. She was masterful in midfield. She controlled that ball in the midfield. She got runs to the outside into the flankers and was dangerous. And also, she was passing incredibly well. She played that diagonal ball to Megan Rapino and uh, Heather O'Reilly and was very good tonight. Now, Ian mentioned the 40 days, rather biblical 40 days waiting for the Women's World Cup. And if you were worried with the loss in London and maybe some moments of erratic play last weekend, this is a quality performance all the way through. Absolutely. I, I, watching them play on Saturday, I was a little bit worried. Tonight, I think it dispelled all the worry I had. And it, and it reminds me that they have some players that can really do some damage. And I thought O'Reilly and Rapino, especially on the outside midfield, they did a great job tonight. Hope Solo, coming back from the shoulder surgery, still playing with some pain, certainly. Uh, and you, of course, as a world-class keeper during your career, what are the things that you look for to tell whether a keeper is truly mentally and physically match fit, and how did she demonstrate that tonight? It was very important for Hope Solo to have a great game tonight. I feel she really did. I feel she went in there. She communicated well with the back line, which was not the most experienced back line she's ever played with. She made a great save in the 80th minute or so. That's not an easy save to make when she hadn't had a whole lot of action before that and able to make that save and make it look very simple. Kept her cool about her and got the shutout. That's huge for her going forward, and that's huge for U.S. team. And here, communication with the back line, yep. still with Christy Rampo not back. He could have played tonight, did not play. No, you know, here, I could hear her in the studio talking to the players, and I think that, that also shows her confidence, that she's ready to be in that goal and to take charge. All right, one more match. It's coming up in early June against Mexico, then over to Austria to train, then the Women's World Cup, 40 days from the first match. Japan, the worthy opponent this evening, they will be in Germany. You'll be with us, too, and we're going to send you back on the other side of the break to Ian and Julie for the U.S. victory tonight. Good news night for the USA, beating Japan by two goals to nil on the way to the Women's World Cup this summer. Amy Rodriguez and local heroine Heather O'Reilly with the second goal, and she's with Bob Holtzman. Heather O'Reilly, a goal and an assist tonight, coming back and playing in front of a lot of home fans, having starred at North Carolina. What was it like to put a ball in the back of the net here on this on this field? Oh, I love this field here in Cary, and uh, obviously it's so great to be back here where I spent four great years at college at UNC. Uh, obviously it's always fun to score goals, but uh, most importantly we won 2-0, two great goals. 
and uh, we're definitely uh, gaining some momentum going into Germany. Your coach before the game told me she, she thought you guys were a little sluggish the other night in Columbus. How do you feel you guys played tonight? I think that we definitely um, put together a better performance tonight. I think that we're still adding layers to our game. I think that we um, had tons of chances on frame tonight, which is a huge positive. And for us to obviously keep a clean slate at the other side is, is good as well. So uh, I think that we are happy we're taking a positive step forward. Heather, congratulations. Thank you. Ian? Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Bob. Well, she used the phrase there, gaining momentum. I think that, yes. that sums Building it up. They do, do look full of goals. And, and that's exactly it, though. This is the period where confidence and cohesiveness is such a huge factor in all of this. And you looked at the result against England in April, and you think, gosh, you know, what, what's this team's mentality like going to be like going into the World Cup? And these two games give you a huge boost going in. They looked the part for the most part tonight, the USA. Abby Wombach couldn't get on the target, but the USA certainly could. And it's going well, the build-up, after one or two hiccups along the way. Coming up next, it's 30 for 30, the two Escobars presented by Cadillac. For Julie Fowley, I'm Ian Dark, once again our final score, USA 2, Japan 0. You're watching ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.